Hey everyone, MTest here, and I want to give you some of my biggest tips for AFK Journey. Now, this is a sponsored video, but I want to tell you I've been playing the hell out of this game. Now, I'm only level 50 on these units, but I played in the beta and I got maxed out characters. Level 240, everyone was like mythical and supreme tier, the highest tier, uh, because I played this for like half a year. I played every single beta, the, the public test realms, I've checked out every unit in this game, and I think that I can actually give you some very good advice on who to build, who you should care about in this game, who pops off as you get copies and dupes of them, and how to really progress your account. So let's get started. So for tip number one, this is an RPG game with an open world. There's enemies to fight on the map as well as quests and chests. I could fight this enemy, get experience. There's another one over here. There's chests that I can open. And there's going to be different challenges and puzzles along the way. This one, for example, is, is kind of a solo challenge. I could throw in a unit here and uh, see if he can beat it all by himself. You want to do all of these around the map and progress because they're going to give you rewards. Let me finish this up and I'll show you. So I just cleared it up. I got a little bit of experience. I got some currency to buy some stuff. Now I could take some of that experience and start leveling up my units to help give them better stats. But there's one very important thing you need to do. As soon as you start making your way through the map, as soon as your characters are like level 10, you want to go down into the corner and go to your AFK progress. These are... Missions that are going to get harder and harder as you go, and it's going to constantly be generating experience for you. But if you don't do this as soon as possible, and you don't try to push this as soon as possible, you're not going to be gaining as much income. So what you want to do is level up your unit, go in here and see, can I beat this level? If not, go clear out some more of the map, do some quests, but always return back and push your AFK stage as far as you possibly can. Because the faster you do that, the more experience per hour you get to push further. By the time you go to bed, you should be able to wake up in the morning and get a bunch of levels to push even more. For tip number two, you need to pay attention to your hands of resonance. This is going to take the average of all these units and it's going to apply it to everyone else. Because the lowest level is 53, these units will max out at 53. If I was to level them all up one time and get them to 54, they would all be level 54, which is really cool because certain units, like Kruger, he is very good for bosses, but someone like Brutus is much better for pushing content like AFK stages and even the campaign stages. So you get to use all these units, and they're all going to be valuable just by building your top ones. But I can trade this out whenever. If I just want to put him there, cool. Now he's level 55. I would highly recommend for tip number three, to balance it out and level them evenly, and I want to explain why. Now, I can push up a unit to be 10 levels higher than anyone else, and that's fine, and Sishio will carry me because she's stronger. However, there are situations where now that my other units are weaker, and all of these Hands of Resonance people are weaker down here, these Resonance heroes, they're not going to be as valuable in some fights as well, and there may be situations where they end up getting one-banged by a boss even though Sishio will live. And so there's some situations where it's kind of a waste to have her super far above everyone. It definitely can work, but I want to explain one other thing. There are multiple quests in the game that are like, get to resonance 60. And if I just push her up to level 68, well, that could delay me an entire day of getting everyone to level 60. Because it's going to be more expensive and take more experience as you level up. And then you're not going to get some really good rewards. So in the early game, I honestly recommend keep everyone even. If you got an extra level here and there is not the end of the world. But if I push her up to 68 or, or 69, when everyone else hasn't crossed this threshold, I'm going to be sitting here waiting to get some really juicy upgrades and some stuff that might be a game changer. I want to show you that as well. Doing the arena is very important because you start getting these arena coins. You get daily and weekly rewards. And that's really awesome because you can also start buying S-rank heroes. And this is huge because you want dupes. In fact, I'm already at 5,500, halfway to getting uh, a dupe of Sishia. If we look back at these quests, by completing them, I get 2,000 arena coins. In the early game, that would be days, if not a week or more, of waiting around to get these coins to progress and get myself a legendary unit. And so, 
I don't want to delay and I don't want to wait. I want to finish these as soon as possible. And you can absolutely waste time where you could have been getting more AFK levels and, and put yourself like a day or two behind just because you were kind of getting greedy with your experience and only leveling up one unit. So for my next tip, all of the characters of a particular type will use the same gear. All my rogues have the same gear. All my mages have the same gear. But there's a way that you can really get ahead in this in the early game. You might notice that my archer has a level 80 weapon, well above everything else. My warrior has a 70, this is an 80. I've got some really nice pieces here, and I want to explain how you can get some of these big pieces that will honestly carry you. Getting an 80 damage weapon is a massive upgrade. And uh, the way that you're able to do that is through the Dream Realm. So as you're playing through the game, you'll unlock the Dream Realm. And when you fight these bosses and you get these rewards for doing a, a particular amount of damage, they'll also do these different uh, chests that will drop weapons. Now, if you throw this on your damage dealers, your mages or your rangers or whatever characters you like to do, you will notice a sizable increase. But then you could also run multiple rangers who are all benefiting from that one weapon. And so it's a huge damage spike. I'm running two or three rangers in every team, and they're just mopping the floor on enemies. As long as my tank and healer can live, those rangers are popping off in the back line. So this is a huge thing. Once you get the Dream Realm, once you start unlocking some of these things, unlock them for your core DPS units first. Every boss has different drops, so um, you can kind of give it to everyone long term, but throw it on your damage dealers first. On top of that, there's also a shop in the game, this Keith guy, and uh, this is a really good way to get some progression. You can get some experience in the early game, you can get some pulls, but one of the things that you can also consider is buying these armor pieces and buying them early. This is actually the thing I'm going to be getting. I'm skipping these pulls because I want to get my tank a level 85 armor, because it's got way more haste, uh, damage reduction, uh, overall HP, so you don't get one banged. And there's many situations where getting these upgrades and getting them early can lead to pushing many floors above where you should. For my next tip, there are different artifacts that you get in game and they do different things. They're all really interesting and can actually, um, just changing your artifact can cause you to win or lose a particular fight. Maybe you need to tank a really high damage team. Maybe you need uh, to nuke down their damage dealers, whatever it might be. They all have their place. What I'd recommend you do is level them up as soon as you can as soon as you hit a resonance level where you can level it up do it because the amount of base stats you get is very good and you start getting other little passives as well it's very cheap to do this it's it's some gold and you're going to get tons of it level these as soon as possible i think you can level it to three and then at level 50 you can get to level five whatever it ends up being please do this asap for my next tip, get into a guild as soon as humanly possible. There's a few reasons why. Number one, there is a guild chest, and you will share um, the different chests and get awesome rewards. Like, this is game-changing stuff. Uh, lots of pulls, uh, materials to upgrade your characters. This is a big upgrade that you get every week. And you can even get some of these, which are, like, for the, the rarest units in the game. It's one of the only ways to get these. On top of that, in a clan... Uh, there's clan quests. So there's clan challenges here, and this is one of the biggest things to progress your account as well. When you and other people complete this quest, you will get these clan currencies, and you can use these to buy some of the best legendary units in the game. And so you want to be in a guild that is active, that is pushing, that is progressing, because getting some of these early can allow you to get uh, massive gains, like huge gains. On top of that, if you're in a guild, you can do these battle drills. This is going to start up tomorrow. Uh, you make your way through, you kind of kill enemies along the way, and you try to fight the boss to get some rewards. So in the case of this, you're going to get some, some diamonds, which is cool. But on top of that, this is like the big thing here, is you also get these keys. Uh, can I show it? Maybe I can show it. You get these keys for doing quests. You get some pulls. This is actually like a, a lot of progression overall. Uh, you can get some, some tokens here. But when you open up those chests, I don't know if it'll show it. Yes, more poles, acorns, essential materials. Very, very important stuff for you. Uh, so you want to be in that guild so you don't miss out on this because they are limited time things. As for currency in-game, 
As for current season game, I want to give you a quick little rundown of the stores. When you do polls, you will get this recruitment store currency and you can buy things in here. Uh, but I would wait, I would hold off and save most of them. You can buy these discounted tickets, uh, but as you level up and you get further, some different things typically show up in here that are, are pretty good. There's rarer summons that are available and things like that. As for the guild store, um, almost always buy this pull because it's, it's a discounted pull. But the one thing you can consider is acorns. I know it's crazy, but acorns are a very big progression point uh, for every account. You need a lot of acorns to level up and ascend your characters. And the thing is, is I can either spend, you know, 300 tickets to, to do a pull. Or I can buy these acorns. And more often than not, it's going to be more valuable to do this, at least in the early game, to get some of your characters ascended. It sounds counterproductive, but after playing through the game multiple times, I think that this is the strat, at least in the very early game, to get a couple characters up and running early. Um, there's some polls for the monthly polls and, and these Hypogen characters. Um, these are, are something that you're going to get from your clan. Probably in the first two weeks, three weeks, you'll get your first character. I highly recommend this guy. This guy is so cracked. He's very, very disruptive. He's a very good unit. Uh, Reiner is awesome. But this unit is also pretty interesting, but I think there was a nerf in the last test. I, I can't quite recall. Uh, I would just be careful. I used this unit, and she was crazy, but Reiner is, is like definitely the one to go right now. As for the arena store and the currency there, getting dupes for your main DPS units is always going to be good, because that just makes them stronger and unlock their exclusive equipment, which I'll kind of show you in a second here. But there's a couple key things I would recommend. Number one. Rowan is a very good unit. You only need kind of one copy. He gives your team energy. A very interesting kind of unit that can work in PvP uh, and can also kind of cheese some content. But the king of cheese is Brutus. Brutus goes immortal for a few seconds and there are situations where you put him in the front line, everyone focuses him, and it buys you enough time to clear the stage. As long as you've got enough damage, there are situations where Brutus is kind of a key piece for pushing content. Uh, another shout out is if you don't get um, one of the best tanks in the game, Thorin for the undead, uh, Granny is also a really good tank overall, but I don't think she's a priority because hopefully you get Thorin. Um, I think that I am going to be focusing on Sishia first because I think she is OP. She is very, very good, and I would recommend every single person use her and build her. Uh, she's pretty crazy. And then after that, we'll see. But that's my focus. As for the Dream Store, this is for beating the bosses and fighting the bosses. Uh, very easy to get this currency. I have a few recommendations that I would highly recommend you focus on. Number one, Odie. Odie is busted. Ba-usted. Instantly kills enemies that are poisoned once you start getting more copies of this unit. Um, absolute god tier in every piece of content. S, 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 S tier. I'm telling you, crazy unit. Marley is also very insane when she gets uh, leveled up for this mode specifically. Um, she ramps up better than almost any unit in the game for damage, and so Marley is a, a very, very good damage unit as well. And then you just got to kind of see where you're at. Can you spend a little bit to upgrade Kruga? Can you spend a little bit to upgrade someone else for PvP or PvE? It's going to depend because you will get a ton of these different units over time, but I would highly recommend you focus on just one. I am only buying Odie. That is all I'm buying until I have his poison, and then I will switch to someone else potentially, but it goes uh, a long way. You get a lot of value from maxing out these units early, and uh, I want to show you that because the friendship store doesn't really matter, but I want to show you that. I'll just jump into it right now. If we look at Odie, okay? Odie has his base skills. Poisoning has a triple tap. It's a good unit at day one. But once you start getting more copies, you start unlocking other passives. And these are big game changers. This just boosts your attack speed. Okay, that's cracked. That's amazing. Sounds good. And now, Odie immediately defeats Poison Enemy when their HP falls below a certain limit. Which is, it's a, it's a good limit. Let me tell you that. And things start to synergize together. Odie insta-kills people, and now, uh, I think there's something in here, you get energy after you poison them, so it's like, I poison them, they die. I get my ultimate again, I poison them, they die, and, and it starts to get really crazy, but this only happens if you have dupes, and then you go and you get the supreme, and now the poisons hit harder and things like that, and so getting multiple copies of certain units um, 
it's relatively easy to do and it leads to a lot of progress long term for all the characters in the game they need these uh dupes but other units once you've gotten their dupes so uh her for example now she needs these acorns this is the progression halter right here you can have a bunch of copies but if you don't have acorns you can't really ascend them and get them to the next tier and so you got to be really careful. There's Omni Acorns that everyone can use. So I could supplement this. If I press supplement, it will actually allow me to ascend her using Omni Acorns. But with certain units, I would just wait and be patient and get the, the class-specific ones. Uh, because you never know when you need those Omni ones to, to make a big push or, or a big upgrade that's going to be a game changer. So be a little bit patient here. But that's kind of the main system. The good news is, is if you were starting right now, there's a bunch of events in-game to progress. So you're going to get a bunch of pulls just for logging in. And then you get a chest to choose these characters. So for me, I already have Brutus. So I'm probably going to get Rowan. But I would get Rowan or Brutus as a priority first. And then you can also consider getting a dupe to make them stronger. Because again, that is valuable, making them even stronger. Um, this guy... Igor was insane, almost broken, and they nerfed him. Still pretty good, but uh, I haven't tested him now that they've nerfed him. And then this guy is very good for grouping enemies, but for me, Brutus is kind of like a cheese. He's, he's kind of a, a necessary evil for certain pieces where they've got really high damage units and, and you just need to survive for a couple seconds. Uh, and then Rowan is, is unique because of his energy uh, boosting capabilities. So highly recommend those. On top of that, you get every unit in the game if you play long enough for free. So there's just a daily login. Boop, 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 boop. You get all the, the epic heroes. You get a copy and then you just start getting some basic rewards. But on top of that, on day 7, on day 14, each one of these is a free S tier hero. And whatever S tier hero you, you get, the next one won't be there. Or, or you can't get them again. So it's like, if I got Brutus on this one, I can never get Brutus again. If I got... Brutus and then Sishia, I can't get Brutus or Sishia ever again for this event. So eventually what ends up happening is you can start getting the Hypogen and Celestial like god tier units uh, as well. You could get them early, you could get lucky, but you might have to wait all the way to the end. But by the end of this, you have one copy of absolutely everyone in the game. So I think that's pretty darn generous overall. Um, on top of that, they've got this event here where you're going to get a couple of pulls and gems just for pushing through the, the different stages. So this is a good way to kind of get your account up and running. And then there's like a boss and, and different things you can do. But those kind of those main events, these first two uh, are going to be the big ones for getting units early on. But there are a lot of free pulls in game just for playing, doing all the chests. And uh, I want to give you some recommendations for characters that you should be pulling for. So let's just jump right into that while we're here. There's going to be character banners, and you could get a copy or two of these characters, but for me, I am waiting. I am actually, after getting uh, and hitting pity here, I am not going to be pulling any more and using any diamonds at all. Because of the free characters you get, and because of all the free pulls you get eventually, um, just from doing like the chests and quests and stuff, I'm going to be hoarding these until there's a, a really good unit like Thorin on here, um, that I just think is a better unit than than Vala. I think she's awesome, she's sweet, uh, but for me, I'm going to wait till I can go all in and like Supreme uh, Thorin or someone like that that uh, I'm absolutely uh, a, a big fan of. These recruits, you will hit pity over time. I would save my gems. If you're getting really close and you want to pull a legendary, what do whatever you want. Um, but with this, it is something that, in my opinion, after you get your first few legendaries, because you're going to get a bunch in the, in the first little bit, your first 10 pull, you get Sishia. At 30 pulls, you get like a really good healer. There's, there's a way to kind of get you started and get your account going. And then you can set up a wish list. Um, I'll, I'll go through my wish list really quickly. This tank has potential, but I just... I used him on my other account, Maximo. I just did not think he was a good tank. I thought, or actually, I think it's a girl, but whatever. I don't think she's good. I just threw this one in. The only one I care about is getting Rowan. As for me, I've used Lucius in the past, and he's a pretty good tank, but this guy is really solid. These are probably the two units that I would pick overall. Um, as for this, um, I think Brutus is someone I want to max out, and Smokey, please put Smokey on here, or you're an idiot. Smokey is such a crazy healer. Like, he's, he's nuts. So, I would highly recommend Smokey. 
Um, the other units, I've tested them out, and they're just... I don't like the vibe of them. The tank is not that great. I just don't think he's that solid. Uh, and then the other ones are, are fine. This one, he's kind of like a lifesteal unit and can be good with dupes, but um, I think these ones are, for me, more important. And then as for the, the epics, Odie is a priority. Max him as soon as you can. Um, she's a really solid tank in the early game and mid game and even in the end game. She's she's got a lot of potential and I'm kind of maxing her out just to be different. But Kruga is also a very good unit for the the bossing. He he shreds the defense of the enemy. He's good, but you don't need a ton of dupes of him to work. It, it's not a priority for me at least. So I'm still using her because I just want dupes. As for the Wilder, um, Hewin, this healer is very solid and I just want dupes of her because I never got to use her in the past. She's a really good AoE healer. Uh, she's good in PvP. Granny is a very good unit. And for me, um, I know that these DPS units, they're both kind of like one's a warrior, one's a ranger. I know they're fine. They're solid. I've built them. I just don't think that they're game changers for my account. There's so many good rangers and damage dealers and things. And uh, I'm just not a huge fan. This guy here, he can group enemies, which is cool. But when I play the game, when I look at the kit, I just don't see the value that other people have. Um, he sucks everyone in, but no one has like a, a nuke that's going to kill them after in a lot of cases, or the nukes that are available are so big that it doesn't matter. I, I feel like all the enemies clump up anyways. I just don't like it. I just don't like it. So I would recommend these people, but that's very biased. As for um, the Wilder Epics, I think they're trash. Most of them are trash other than Laika. Laika is a very good unit. She's a good damage dealer. And, uh, and she supports your team with attack speed. I put the healer just to have another healer, just in case in a panic situation. But this guy is kind of cool, because he does this little, little like, sprint, and he, he, he body checks someone, and he can one-bang people. But do you want to invest in him? I don't know. I'm not so sure about it. As for the Graveborn, um, Sishia is very solid. I'm just going to max her out as soon as possible because she's really good. And then Thorin, the tank, is busted. He's so good. Uh, I really want to get him as soon as humanly possible and dupes as soon as possible. Igor got nerfed but is still good. I just don't think he's as good as Thorin or Priority. And then this chick, she's like a kind of like an AoE freeze mage kind of thing. She has her places, but I just don't think she's a priority for me. And then these ones... Uh, Nairu is a healer. I think this is probably like the safest two overall um, because the skeleton guy, uh, he's like a good AoE mage and uh, can be pretty cool in arena. He'd be good everywhere. He can kind of nuke. Nairu has some tech where he like makes your whole team immortal, but you need a lot of copies. I think uh, I think it's kind of a, one of those all-in things. But I picked this chick because she's an assassin and I've never used her and I just want her. I just wanted to use her. So... That's just my bias. That's how I set mine up. And then again, with these epic recruitments, these are a little bit rarer pulls, but it's a higher chance to get epics. This is what I chose. Brutus, because he's a cheese. Sishia, because I want to max her as soon as possible. Have another tank. One of the best healers, uh, if not best healer in the game. And then Thorin. Those who are my choices. You could choose whoever you want, but that's who I'm maxing out. That's who I want to go for. So yeah, that's kind of the main stuff. Later in the game, there's this other one, but that's going to be a while. We don't need to talk about that right now. So there's not much more to say. The, the key progression is do the quests. If you can't do the quests, do your AFK stages. If you can't do your AFK stages, sometimes you just got to wait. Uh, but just make sure you're doing your daily and weekly stuff. Do your bosses each week. You know, do one right when it drops. See if you can get any progress. Wait five or six hours, try it again. You get multiple attempts each day, and then wait until the very last minute, level up your characters, and go back in and see if you can get another chest. Eventually, you'll beat it, and you get some really juicy rewards for doing that. So that's uh, really cool. But yeah, just, you know, jump in, run around the map, do your quests, do your chests, go fight some stuff. If you can't kill that wolf, that's fine. Sometimes you have to wait. That's part of the game, unfortunately, is you, you, you just gotta wait. Um, make sure that you push these AFK stages, like, 
while I've been making this video, 30 minutes have passed. I got more experience. I can go to my resonating hall and, and maybe that's enough getting this to 60 here. Maybe now I can clear a level and start getting that currency up. So that's what I'm doing. As soon as I have a feeling that maybe I can beat this, I'm going back in and I'm trying again to see if I can make some more progress. So that's kind of the main tips, the main progression, what I would recommend you do if you want to get started in the game. And uh, that's it for me. Good luck. Thanks so much. Make sure you click that link down below and try AFK Journey today. And thank you so much for sponsoring the channel. We're going to have some more guides coming out soon because I honestly really enjoy this game and I've been playing it on my spare time. So that's it. See you later. Bye-bye. And I, I hope that I can beat this. I think I'm going to beat it. Oh, yeah. We're, we're good. We got, it. we got a big undead golem. Easy peasy lemon squeezy.